start with the conference that everybody loves here, the Big East. T.O., going to you first. You got Marquette, you got Creighton, you got Xavier, you got Providence, you got UConn, you even got Villanova, Seton Hall, St. John's. Who is best built for making a run in March out of that league? I'm back on the Blue Jays. I'm back on the Blue Jays. Kyle Printer's back in back in action. Uh, he's improved their defense tremendously. Creighton's got the 12th best defense in the country, according to Ken Palm. And they have shot making, they have guard play, and they're peaking at the right time. That's a big thing, too. Like, it's okay to like go through a slump in December and January. That's fine. It, it expedites your learning process for your guys. And what happens? You get healthy, you figure it out. Guys find their roles quicker because you're losing. Something's got to change. It's easier to preach what, what needs to be done whenever you're losing. Because sometimes you win and some of the things, the small things that you're doing wrong get swept under the rug because you won. Creighton got smacked in the mouth early in the season, but the talent was still there. Arthur Kaluma is still there. Baylor Shireman is still there. Trey Alexander is still there. Like They still have pieces that could make a run in March. Fanta? Yeah, I, I look at it. Creighton, to me, is the best team in this league and the team that's most poised to make the run in March, which shouldn't come as a surprise because we did believe – that they would be a top 10 worthy team. And you think about what they've been able to do here in winning eight in a row. It's their longest winning streak in conference play since 2011, 12, since they were in the Missouri Valley conference back then. Trey Alexander on Saturday was the reason why Creighton beat Connecticut combined with the blue Jays, great defense, but in a game that was such a defensive war, 56, 53, and by the way, I was encouraged by Connecticut. I'll get to them in a second because I, I just thought that they fought hard and, and that there's something there. However, Alexander's degree of difficulty on his shot making was absurd. I mean, he had 17 points on six of eight from the floor, and at least four of those six made shots were difficult, were contested mm. jumpers late in the shot clock. He hit Over the two last... ridiculous ones in the first half, and it was just like, how the fuck did that go in? That's right. Over the last 13 games, Alexander has averaged 16 points. And when you have Ryan Nemhard, who's third in the Big East at assists with 5.3 dishes per game, and Ryan Kalkbrenner, who's one of the nation's leading field goal percentage guys with 73% of his shots being makes, look, they've got it. They've got it. Now, what's interesting in this conference this year is, okay, well, you've got five ranked in the AP Top 25, It's not just Creighton and everybody else. No, it's actually Marquette who finds himself in the driver's seat. So you're really saying here, okay, Marquette, Xavier, Providence, then UConn. And I still put UConn in the mix. Who after that, who after Creighton's most dangerous to make the run in March? I'm saying Connecticut. And I say that because they have figured certain things out. They're guarding better. They went through some defensive lapses. I like the fact that this late in the season, they have a week in between games. Mm -hmm. They don't have a midweek game. That's a good thing for a team like Connecticut, in my opinion, because it gives them a chance to get back in the lab and work on themselves. Yeah, there's there's one thing that they've done. and They've they've tweaked some things to find ways to be able to use Andre Jackson offensively. One of the things they did against Creighton was – uh, they would set a cross screen for Sonogo with him, get Sonogo up to the to the high post about 17 feet away from the at the foul line, and then run down screens on either side of the floor using Andre Jackson to let Adama go one on one and create. Um, and Adama's skilled enough to do that. Uh, I reiterating all your points, it's it's Creighton to me. There's two reasons that really stand out. One, multiple shot makers, multiple playmakers, multiple guys that can get you one at the end of a possession, at the end of a clock. To you, that's your favorite thing to say, right? When things go bad, you need a guy that can get you one. Yep. They got three of them. Yep. Um, the other thing is, if you look at what they've done since Kalkbrenner got back from his illness, they've been a top three team in America over the course of the last six weeks. Yes. If you, if you go and look yep. at their stuff on Torvik, they are the third best team in America mm-hmm. over that stretch. And not Elijah only Torvik. are they elite defensively, but they don't foul. Right. And one of the they, they're, they're not deep. They, they basically don't. have five guys and then everyone else you can kind of cycle through to get someone to blow. One of the concerns is what happens if you get in foul trouble, you got to go to the bench. Right. Well, they don't foul. UConn shot four three free throws, and it was all because Trey Alexander was chasing Jordan Hawkins and fouled him on two three-pointers, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why they shot free throws. So um, they're great defensively. They don't let you get good shots. They don't foul you. They don't put you on the free throw line. They got different guys that can make things, uh, make plays for you. Just they're a very, very good basketball team. I think they're going to make a run. They're going to prove us all right. All right. Nothing for Marquette. 
they're I love them. Love Marquette. Love Shaka. Marquette and Xavier, to me, the concern is the defensive end. And if the shots aren't going in, how do you win games? And over the course of a six game you attack stretch, the rim. Well, they, over the course of a six game stretch, you're going to have games where you're not great offensively. And I just don't think they can win a game when they're not great offensively. They're good. I think Marquette's a second threat. weekend team. Yeah. Well, I like. Well, let me tell you something. Hey, narratives and whatnot in the Big East. This is a very important season for the Big East. Important March for the Big East. This is one of the best shots for the conference to get three teams to the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. That has not happened. That has not happened in the new Big East. And this is year 10. So I will say this about perception and all that. We talk about March performance. This is an important year. Again, Marquette, I know people are always, their jaws always drop when, when this stat is said. You guys have heard it from me before. They have not won an NCAA tournament game in a decade. So that drought needs to end this year. Because, Terrence, to your point, I don't think they're good enough to win five games in the NCAA tournament. I'm not even sure, I'm not sure about four. That team can win two games in the NCAA tournament. They're, they are dangerous. And Tyler Kolick has 201 assists in 25 basketball games. So look, they're 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 a dangerous team. The the thing that Rob says is what happens if they start to go through an offensive rut? Can they make up for it? But I'll tell you what, Wednesday night, seven Eastern time from the five Sir Forum, Marquette hosts Xavier. And yeah. for you for you basketball huge, fans out there, it's a huge there, Big East week. We got Marquette yeah. Xavier uh, tomorrow, and tonight we have Creighton at Providence. By the way, Providence is getting points at home. I'm probably gonna have to be on Providence in that spot. 34 and 1 in their last 35 games at Amica Mutual Pavilion slash Dunkin' Donuts Center. 34 it's the dunk. It's the dunk. One. Don't say the other thing. It's the dunk. It's the dunk on this one. podcast. It could be the other thing anywhere else. When you're on Fox, you could say the other thing. When you're on the DTF podcast, it's the dunk. Haven't lost at home this year. <laughs> All right. Let's, hey, I saw a great I saw a great thing. Uh, these guys at slapping glass. Have you guys watched that? What Marquette yes. does. They they are so good. They they do a really nice job. But they uh I know they're not part of our network, but I felt like it needed to be said. Like they they broke down Marquette's uh, basically opening to their offense and how they're using the slots as opposed to the forty five and spacing out everything and attacking certain guys and put. I mean, it's it's really tough to guard because you're constantly chasing. It's like a pistol into a ball screen, but it's in the slot as opposed to the forty five. So everything's in the middle of the floor, and like Tyler Kolick is such a good decision maker at that spot, and it they're using different spots on the floor than I think people are accustomed to seeing. So it's tougher to guard. Like they, they do some interesting things. It's a good thing. I like to use the timer on this one, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting league. That It really is. And and it's an important year for Marquette. I think that people have had trust issues with them in March fellas. So now is the time for them to turn that corner. Shaka smarts talked about that, that they've got to play their best at the most important time. They, they got right against Georgetown. They're in the driver's seat at 12 and three in the Big East. If there was ever a get right game. If there was ever a get right game. That's it's, right. Hey, um, keep an eye. To my my bold prediction in the Big East, we're going to turn the page to semifinal Friday at the Big East tournament, and Villanova will still be standing. Yeah, I agree. But I've been yelled at for having that opinion before. So, uh, 